Today we're going to be talking about and winding the PQ's power transformer right here. I chosen this one for this design because anything larger than this is a way overkill. So since I only need four turns for the primary and one for the secondary, I don't need a very large transformer. So that's what we're going to do today on you build it, I'll show you how. We're going to get to winding that transformer in a moment. But first, let me show you a simple pulse modulated signal that I'm working on right here. So if we see on the scope where the waveform is at, and we look at the meter, we see we're at 5.5 volts. So if I give it more pulse width, it goes up to 5.63 volts. And you can see on the scope, the width increased. If I go back, it's 5.506. And you see it there. So I can control the output of this converter by how much signal I give it here and by doing this I'm just really touching the input wire to the ground through my body so it's going through me but it's so small and it's an amplified signal after I got my circuit built and I built it on this proto foil here and then I cut out some holes to fit the transformer get it so that it fits perfect without putting the wire on the transformer first so this is my primary and this is my secondary right here what you want to find is you want to get a wooden dowel such as this right here and it doesn't it's very loose on there so you gotta put some tape make it snug like this right here Then you fasten some wires onto it. And you tape them down, tape down real good electrical tape. Then you get your turn started. Now this is where I got to make four turns to wind this transformer. That's two. This will be three. Okay, after you get the four turns on it, or however many your primary dictates for your design, you have to get this slack out, and it's kind of hard to do that without keeping tension on it. So the one way I do that is by putting some tape here first, because when you wrap the tape in this direction, it'll pull the coil tight around the bobbin. Basically like this right here. Then we're going to grab this end with our finger, just hold it and pull and bend it to go down in that slot right there. Then we'll wrap tape around this right here. So after you get the, the four turns on it, I'm going to cut these here a little bit longer than those because these are the two starts and these are the two finishes. So we're going to cut those right about here. Then we're going to wrap electrical tape around this to secure this. wrap it all the way that way the end the wire doesn't get damaged from the gripping on it now this is on here really solid since the secondary is going to be even thicker but this has two secondaries so we're going to wind the, the little one first since this transformer has two secondaries, one is to power up some op amps so I have a bipolar power supply, which is not possible from the single ended power supply that's running the converter and regulator. So we're going to wind two turns because we need 12 volts 
and we're going to start it on the other side right over here. So now we're just going to put two turns on. This one. There's two. Wrap a piece of tape like so, like one and a half turns. This is mylar metallic tape, so you should use any kind of mylar. Cut the ends off one inch longer so we know that's the start, and these two are the finish. And wrap with tape. Okay, so we got the primary wound. And we got the little two turn secondary. So we got the four turn primary and the two turn secondary with the 26 gauge wire. So we could power up the op amps on the card for the current limiting circuit. We need bipolar power to do it properly. And we finish with the one turn secondary of 12 gauge. Yeah, it was a tough wine. They're more fun to wine with thinner wire, but it can be done. I'm going to peel the tape off like this. As you get all the tape off, just remove the mandle. And there's our wound core. So there we have the finished transformer. The way you figure out your start and finish is use an ohmmeter. And my starts are the are the shortest ones and the finish are the longest ones. So these two will make the center tap right here. That's how we create a center tap by winding two winds of wire at once. It's called bifilar. Simply what I'm trying to do is I created a feedback circuit that measures the output of the voltage. Now it's not connected up to it yet because there's issues with oscillation and we'll get into that later. But first, I built this so that I can modulate a new way to regulate power and that's to modulate the transformer primary uh, voltage going to it and current too by controlling the pulse width so if we're at about maybe half power there we're at full power there if we go on the other side I can actually turn this thing off because it's so sensitive that if the voltage goes below ground it'll just shut off so what I'm going to do is my future video is going to be about how to solve this issue with the oscillation on the regulation so that this thing can control the power output and keep the voltage regulated. So the basics of regulation are is that you have a feedback circuit that feeds back to the converter that tells it when the voltage drops at the load. So if the voltage were to drop at the load basically we want to give the converter more pulse width like a little bit more and that's how we overcome it so if we're driving at mid load and all of a sudden we take off some of that mid load then we gotta give it more or less pull twist down to here <clears throat> but that's the basics of it when it's charging a battery when the battery gets full it wants to turn off because it has to or else the battery will get over voltage so it has to at some point be able to just shut off so that was one of the obstacles in designing the circuit one issue is the minimum dead time can never be exceeded because if the FETs were to switch on both at the same time there would be shoot through currents and we definitely would blow them out so to prevent that I had to use a voltage regulator to this operational amplifier so that I can adjust the voltage to it so that it never puts out more than an amount to give me basically 800 nanoseconds
of time. So that's 800 nanoseconds right there. So this is a little bit bigger version of the same power supply that I showed you in the last video. Except this one has a current output of up to 20 amps at about 3.65 volts is where I'm trying to regulate it at. So the main differences in this circuit than the other one is that this does have adjustable current limit on it and to achieve that I basically measured across a piece of wire uh, 12 gauge basically the voltage and amplified it with an op amp and then fed that to a transistor to turn down the the reference drive to the regulator circuit so when I designed this unit here I designed it on a proto foil which is harder to take parts off if you need to make changes so I only recommend this stuff here if you already have it figured out that's how it's going to work and you already know that it works so on this I know pretty much how to put the converter together but when it came to the regulator on it it's a new type of design so I have to work the bugs out of it but that's how it is we have to all go through that if you want to look at my soldering work up closer you can we could take a little peek at it here but it's it looks like it's a miniature little rat's nest in a way so watch for my next video part four I'll try to tackle this uh, the regulator issue here I gotta do a little investigation and a little experimentation so thank you for watching the video and remember you can always donate at patreon thank you